Here's a short video to accompany a project I recently posted to my blog, which is an open source Arduino compatible Cherry MX keypad. And here it is. So let's go ahead and take a look around the board here. It has four Cherry MX keys, as you can see. And I happen to pick the blue Cherry MX keys, but it is compatible with other types of MX keys as well. The microcontroller on here is an ATmega 32U4. And I have this set up to look like an Arduino Leonardo to the Arduino IDE. So that's what you'll program it as. Uh, there's a micro USB connector there on the side. If we go ahead and take a look at the back of the board, there's really nothing uh, on the back. There are a couple mounting holes. And so what is this? Well, it's a HID, uh, or a human interface device. Uh, basically, when you plug it into your computer, it looks like a mouse and or a um, keyboard. And uh, by programming the microcontroller, uh, you can have these keys send whatever you want when you press them. So it could be a single character, it could be a number, it could be a mouse click, it could even be a sequence of key presses and or mouse clicks. You could put delays in the sequence, you can do pretty much whatever you want. And uh, certainly there are other ways to do that. There are applications you can run on your computer to do custom key bindings. Uh, some keyboards will have customizable keys. Um, so this is an open source project and it's really designed for you to build your own. Uh, the design files are shared, so you could go ahead and take this, use it as a template, and uh, modify it to be a full numeric keypad. Uh, you could create a full-size keyboard even out of this if you wanted to. So that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and plug it in and take a look at the backlighting. So uh, indeed, the keys do have backlighting, as you can see. And I just have kind of a pulsing sequence programmed in here right now. And uh, the Cherry MX keys, it's kind of nice. They have a little spot in the, the side of the key for a uh, three millimeter LED. And uh, I'm just driving those using one of the PWM pins from the 32U4. So it's a pretty nice little board. Again, very customizable, both in the programming of it. You can program the keys to send whatever you want and also in the hardware and the fact that it's an open source project. So you can take this and modify it to be whatever you want. So let's go ahead and connect this up to a computer and take a look at what we can do with it. Okay, we have our Cherry MX keypad hooked up to the computer here. I just have it hooked up to my MacBook Air and I have Microsoft Word loaded up. And the program that I have loaded into the uh, 32U4 right now uh, has these keys sending W, A, S, and D. So if we just go ahead and start typing, we'll see that it behaves just like a uh, normal keyboard. And the responsiveness of it is very good. The keys are debounced in software. So overall, it's uh, really nice. Now I'll also show you how easy it is to reprogram this. So if I go ahead and switch over to the Arduino IDE, I already have the example program loaded up here, and I just have to modify the line of code that sends the particular character. So I'm going to modify the first key here to send a K instead of a W. I'll go ahead and upload that. You can see I don't have to do anything special. I literally just hit upload, and it's done already. And this is remounted now as a keyboard. So if I go ahead and come back here, type the keys, you can see it's now sending K, A, S, and D. That's simple. All right, another potential use for this keypad is video games and doing custom key bindings. So here I have Minecraft loaded up, and I just started a brand new world. So I have a lot to do. I need to get some resources. I need to explore a little bit. And of course, what's the very first thing that I need when I start up a brand new Minecraft world? I need some Super Cheaty Diamonds. So let's bring in some Super Cheaty Diamonds with my keypad here. Go ahead and push the button. And as you can see, it's, it's giving me diamonds. So I've just programmed it to send a, a give command. Give me diamonds. And uh, many other things that you could do with this, um, especially if you're doing some type of AFK activity, farming activity, XP grinder, Pretty much anything where you need to hold down or use a repetitive key sequence, maybe even something involving uh, holding down uh, mouse uh, mouse button, you could program that into the keypad. Um, you could program a key to start the sequence, go AFK for a while, come back and use another key to stop it. All kinds of stuff. And it's not just Minecraft, of course, many other video games, even productivity software, you know, lots of, lots of different uh, opportunities to use a keypad like this to bind some custom command to the keypad and have it readily accessible on a hardware keypad. That can be a pretty useful thing. 
Okay, so if you're interested in assembling and making one of your own uh, Cherry MX custom keypads here, uh, this is a shared project, so you're going to want to click on the um, link to the blog post article in the description of this video. That'll take you over to my blog. I have you know, a lot of the information that I just went through in this video. I have all the design files. Those are shared on GitHub. Uh, it is already uploaded to Oshpark as a shared project, so you can order PCBs right now if you want to. And this is what the PCBs look like. And uh, it is a surface mount design, so keep that in mind. Uh, make sure that you're comfortable doing a doing surface mount soldering uh, before you attempt to assemble your own your own one of these. Um, now, the, there are a couple parts on here that are a little difficult, particularly the crystal and uh, the USB connector. So just make sure you take a look at the images of the board and the um, you know the design files and everything uh, before you order boards. Okay, so if you saw assemble all the uh, surface mount parts, this is what you'll have. And uh, after that, you're going to need to solder on your Cherry MX keys. This is what they look like. Uh, even though Cherry MX products um, are pretty expensive, you know, uh, keyboards that use Cherry MX keys, um, the keys themselves are not all that pricey, uh, as you'll see when you look on, uh, on my blog post article to the links of where you can buy them. Uh, you know, under a dollar for a Cherry MX key. Um, so they, they aren't super crazy expensive. And as far as using them on boards, it's, it's very simple. It's literally just a switch. That's how you use it in a circuit. So um, you'll uh, solder on your Cherry MX keys. And the uh, three millimeter LED here, as you can see, just goes into this little recess. And uh, that's where the LED sits. And uh, that'll just solder into the board. So after you have your Cherry MX keys on there, you're going to have to decide on keycaps. So here's an example of some clear ones. I think I just got these on Amazon. Uh, there are, uh, you know, much nicer and uh, more kind of custom keycaps as well. These are just some uh, metal uh, arrow keys, as you can see, and so those are pretty nice. Uh, keep in mind that uh, most uh, keycaps will have the character or the symbol kind of offset to one side or the other. So if I wanted to use these on um, this particular board, that would work great because the arrow keys are offset in the correct direction to uh, sit right above the LED. Um, other keycaps will have the character offset to the top. So, you know, it would still work with this. I would just have to kind of turn it around and mount my keys like that so that the um, LED is the right way up. But uh, just keep that in mind, especially if you're going to uh, customize this board and make your own, like, you know, numeric keypad or something like that. Um, just keep the orientation of the LEDs in mind so that it lines up exactly with your keycaps that you want to use and so that the silk screen and everything is kind of the, the right way up, if you will. And uh, after you get your board fully assembled, you're going to need to load the bootloader. So you're going to need a programmer for that. You're going to want to use like an Atmel ICE or a USB Tiny ISP and uh, connect up to the programming port here and flash the bootloader to the uh, ATmega 32U4. You can do that right from the Arduino IDE. Uh, after that, you will not need the programmer again. You only need it that first time to flash the bootloader. Uh, after that, uh, you just plug it in via USB to your computer. That's how you program it, and that's how you use and power it. So that's pretty much it. Um, again, go ahead and check out the blog post article um, that I have linked down below. And if you have any questions or comments, please post them in the comments down below. Please post on my uh, blog article. Um, also follow me on Twitter, which is at sync underscore channel. I'll have a link to that as well in the, uh, the description of the video. And uh, yeah, if you assemble your own one of these, please uh, tweet me a picture of that. If you customize and, and make your own design from these design files, I'd love to see a picture of that. And uh, that's all. So thanks for watching.